there are so many credit cards out there that it may be overwhelming as to which ones you should actually consider getting. While everyone's credit card setup is gonna be a little bit different, there is one setup in particular that I think is going to be the best for the general credit card user who wants to travel the world for free. And of course, we're gonna be talking about that setup here today. And we're even gonna start from the very beginning of your credit card journey with this first credit card we're talking about, the Chase Freedom Student Card. Now, since this is a beginner credit card, you should not be expecting to profit a lot off of using this card. This card is going to serve one purpose and one purpose only in this credit card setup, and that's gonna to be to build your credit history in order to get the other cards we're gonna talk about later down the line. Also, I do understand that this card is a student credit card, meaning that it's only accessible to students. So at the end of the day, the card in this first slot can really be whatever starter card that you decide to go with. One of the most popular ones being the Discover It Secured card. But if you're watching this and you are a college student, then I would highly recommend getting started with the Chase Freedom Student, not because of the earning categories it offers, but because how it's gonna set you up for the future of your credit card journey. One of the ways that this card does set you up really well for the rest of your credit card journey is that it is a Chase card and Chase really values you having experience with them or having some kind of relationship with them in the past. And being that this is theoretically the first card you're gonna get in your credit card setup, it'll be really nice that it is a Chase card because that should help ensure that you get approved for their other cards we're gonna talk about later. However, like I mentioned, there isn't much going on with this card, especially on the earning standpoint. All it's gonna give you is 1X Chase Ultimate Rewards points back on every single purchase. And obviously that's nothing to call home about, but this card also does give you a $50 welcome offer as long as you just make any purchases on this card, plus a $20 good standing credit that you can get every single year for five years of having this card. They give you a credit limit increase after making five on-time payments within 10 months of having the card. And they have a ton of features that really help you understand your credit score and how your credit card works so that you can get started off on the right foot. And all this is gonna to come to you with no annual fee, which is exactly what you want in a starter credit card because you're gonna theoretically keep this one open forever. As you can see, this is actually the very first credit card I ever got myself, and I am really happy that I went through with it like I did. Another big reason that you want this card first is because Chase does have the infamous 524 rule. The 524 rule basically states that if you've opened five or more personal credit cards in the past 24 months, then you'll automatically be denied for another Chase credit card. Now, I have seen some people out there kind of getting by this rule with the business credit cards that Chase offers, but for the most part, this is a hard set rule, especially on their personal cards. So you're gonna wanna keep that in mind when planning out what cards you're gonna get next. And that's not even all for this card. The actual main reason that I think it's important to get the Chase Freedom Student over any other starter credit card is because you can later product change this credit card into a different Chase Freedom card, specifically the OG Chase Freedom, if you can still swing it. I have heard that they might take away this option, and if that was the case, then I'd probably product change this card into the Chase Freedom Flex, like we're gonna talk about a little bit later. But the really cool thing about the OG Chase Freedom, which is the card that I actually have, and I product change to from my Chase Freedom student, is that it's still gonna give you those 5X rotating quarterly categories that the Chase Freedom Flex does, but with no other categories on top of that besides 1X back on everything else. So once you've had your Chase Freedom student for a while and you start to get some more credit cards on top of that, then you can product change it to this card, take advantage of all the rotating quarterly categories, or you could just leave this card open as it is and just put one charge on it every three to six months just to keep that line active. But obviously none of these options are gonna be possible if you don't start with a Chase Freedom student compared to another credit card. Also, I'm sure some of y'all are curious as to why I didn't just recommend that you product change this to the Chase Freedom Flex over the OG Chase Freedom. And the reason you don't wanna do this is because whenever you product change to a new credit card, you will not get the welcome bonus for that new card. So if you product change this card to the Chase Freedom Flex, but haven't gotten the welcome bonus on it, then you'll have to wait 24 months due to Chase's terms in order to get the welcome bonus on that card again. So I always recommend that if you do wanna get the welcome bonus on a specific credit card, that you do not product change to it, but you apply for it fresh. So as long as the opportunity is still open for you to product change to the OG Chase Freedom, I would 100% recommend that you do that. Because with this overall credit card setup we're talking about, you really only need the rotating 5% categories on the Chase Freedom Flex anyways. So you don't have to worry about all the other earning categories that the Chase Freedom Flex comes with because the next card we'll be talking about will cover those for you. And of course, that card is going to be the Chase Freedom Unlimited. If you've been with this channel for a while, you will know that this is one of my favorite credit cards that there is out there. And as far as this setup in particular that we're talking about today, the Chase Freedom Unlimited is going to be your catch-all credit card. And it's the last card in this setup that doesn't come with an annual fee. The Chase Freedom Unlimited is going to get you 5X back on all travel booked through Chase's Ultimate Rewards Portal, 3X on dining, 3X on drugstores, and 1.5X on everything else. That 1.5X on everything else is really what separates this card from the other very popular brother of this card, the Chase Freedom Flex. And the reason that I just mentioned that you'd rather product change the OG Chase Freedom over the Chase Freedom Flex because you won't need those other categories is because the Chase Freedom Unlimited overlaps with the same categories that the Chase Freedom Flex does other than the 5X rotating quarterly categories. So that's why you'd only need the OG Chase Freedom and not the Chase Freedom Flex. This card, just like the Chase Freedom Student and the OG Chase Freedom all earn Chase Ultimate Rewards points. And all the points you earn on both of these cards can be combined with the points you earn on the next credit card we're gonna talk about, which is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. This credit card is gonna be what brings all of your other Chase credit cards to life. 
Once you get this card, you will have officially completed the Chase Trifecta, which is one of the most popular credit card setups out there. But being that this is a slightly more luxury credit card that is made of mostly metal, it is gonna come with the first annual fee of any of the cards we're talking about today at an annual fee of $95. But with what this card gets you at that small price, you're gonna learn to love this card as much as I do. On the earning side of things, this card does get you 5X back on all travel book through Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal, 3X on dining, 3X on streaming services, 3X on online groceries, 2X on travel, and 1X on everything else. So those earning categories alone are not gonna be the reason we get this credit card, but it is nice to throw in a couple more supporting categories that the other cards might not cover, like the streaming services, for example. This card also does come with a $50 annual hotel credit whenever you book a hotel through Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal. Plus it gives you a 25% boost on your Chase points whenever you use them in the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal or whenever you use the Pay Yourself Back feature. But most importantly of all, this card is going to give you the ability to transfer all of your Chase points out to travel partners. And this perk alone is going to massively increase the value that you can get from your Chase points. For those of you who watch this channel often, you will know that I value my Chase points at at least two cents per point, and this card is the very reason that I do that. While two cents per point does sound like a lot, I've heard multiple examples of people getting over 10 cents per point with their Chase Ultimate Rewards points, which is pretty crazy. Usually you're gonna be having to travel in luxury to get that kind of redemption value, like on first class or business class flights, but one of the most valuable transfer partners that Chase has is going to be with Hyatt on the hotel side. And I've heard of people getting pretty close, if not more than 10 cents per point when using Hyatt as well. I personally have not gotten a redemption that valuable so far, but I also haven't really tried to do so yet. Whenever I do go to book some trips in 2023, I'm gonna be documenting that process for y'all and tell y'all exactly how you can get more value for your points. And the cool thing about Chase points in particular is that you can combine all of your points onto your highest tier Chase card, this being the Chase Sapphire Preferred in this setup. And then you can transfer all of your points out to travel partners on your Chase Sapphire Preferred, and that's gonna automatically increase the value of all of your other points. So if you value your Chase points at two cents per point like I do, then instead of earning 1.5X on the Chase Freedom Unlimited, for example, you're actually gonna be earning 3X effectively. The other great thing about Chase points is that they are the most flexible points, in my opinion, in the entire credit card game. Not only can you do these awesome redemptions that we're talking about at 10 cents per point or more whenever you transfer out to travel partners, but you also always have the flexibility to redeem your points for cash back at one cent per point. So you're not just stuck to using all of your points for travel or anything like that. So for the Chase Sapphire Preferred, after the hotel credit, this card comes in with just an effective $45 annual fee. And with the amount of value you can get from this card by transferring out to travel partners, you're gonna easily profit from this card every single year. Even if you never spend on this card, and just use it as a pass-through entity for all of your Chase Ultimate Rewards points that you earn on your Chase Freedom Unlimited and OG Chase Freedom, the value you get from that alone is going to make up the annual fee on this card for many years. I mean, heck, even just one trip on this card every single year will make up that annual fee for you. But at this point, I'm sure you're tired of hearing about only Chase cards. So let's talk about a card with the other most popular lender in the credit card game, Amex. And the fourth card of this five card setup is going to be the Amex Gold card. I mean, you knew this card had to be coming. It was just a matter of time. This card is one of the most popular credit cards in the entire world. Even if you don't have the credit card yourself, you probably know about it. However, I do think that this is a card that most people should look into and could actually get a ton of value from if they just took the time to look into it. However, that does come with some caveats, so make sure that you listen to this part of the video before you just go and apply for it. The reason I do say that is because this card does come with a $250 annual fee, and if you can't get value from the credits every single year on this card, then it's definitely not worth it for you. But if you live anywhere near a city or frequent a city at least once a month, then you're going to get enough value from this card to make it worth it for you every single year. It also complements the chase cards that we talked about earlier really well because while these chase cards do offer you a ton of value in a bunch of different categories you might have noticed that one of those categories that these cards don't really cover very well is groceries however that's exactly where the amex gold card comes in because this card is going to earn you 4x at restaurants and 4x at u.s supermarkets plus 3x on flights booked directly with airlines and 1x on all other purchases so this card is basically going to be your dedicated food card and anytime you're picking up any kind of food you're going to want to use this card also i do know that the chase cards earn 3x back on dining but this one does earn 4x so unless you're trying to accumulate a ton of chase points for some reason you're also going to put all your dining purchases on this credit card another underrated perk with this card is that it does earn that 3x back on all airline purchases made directly with the airlines because if you were to book all of your flights on your chase sapphire preferred you'd only get 2x back for those purchases and although 1x extra is not that much it's still going to be worth it i would just use the chase sapphire preferred for all hotel purchases and use the amex gold card for all your airline purchases unless you either book a hotel through amex's travel portal or a flight through chase ultimate rewards portal also, it's important to note that this card is going to earn Amex membership rewards points, and these points are gonna be the most valuable whenever you transfer them out to travel partners, which you can do with this card. If you do try to redeem your Amex membership rewards points for cash back, unlike Chase's ecosystem, you're only gonna earn 0.6 cents per point on all of your cash back redemptions. And of course, I always have to make the exception that if you do have the Charles Schwab version of the Amex Platinum card, you can redeem your points for 1.1 cents per point for
for cashback, but you'll have to have a brokerage account to do that and apply for that card itself. So it's a little bit more hoops to jump through. That being said, I do value my Amex membership rewards points at the exact same rate I do my Chase points at two cents per point because you're also transferring all these points out to travel partners. And again, similar to Chase's points, you can get upwards of 10 cents per point in value with these points as well. You just have to do your research and likely you're gonna need to book some more luxury travel to get that. Now we know that this card does earn well, but how do we make sure that we're not losing $250 a year on this card by paying that annual fee? This card's gonna come with two major credits that help offset that annual fee. The first credit being a $120 dining credit, which is a $10 per month statement credit that can be used at the select location shown on screen. And the second credit being a $120 Uber cash credit that is also broken into $10 per month increments. However, instead of statement credits, the Uber cash is deposited directly into your Uber cash account. So it's pretty easy to track in the app and you can either use those credits for Uber rides or for Uber Eats. So for my longtime subscribers, you know that I use the dining credit for Grubhub and I use the Uber credit for Uber Eats. That effectively gives me $20 per month for free in food. But the pro tip I always recommend is to set all of those apps to pick up only instead of delivery. That way you actually get value from these credits instead of just wasting money on the delivery fees. Both of those two credits alone though are gonna bring the effective annual fee down on this card from $250 to just $10. So to me, that makes this card a no brainer for anybody that spends a ton of money on food. And of course, that's gonna be all of us. Just make sure that you can take advantage of these credits before you apply for this card, like I said before. And speaking of credits, let's talk about the fifth and final card in this five card setup being the Amex Platinum card. Now, unfortunately, I don't have that card to hold up for the rest of this video, but this card is going to be your luxury travel card of the setup. This card's gonna give you some hotel status, some access to more exclusive lounges, a bunch of travel credits, and a lot more. Being that this is a luxury travel card, it's gonna come with an annual fee to match that at $695. However, just like the gold card, of course, it's gonna come with a ton of credits to help offset that annual fee. And effectively, I've heard that you can earn at least $1,500 back with this card every single year, but don't get excited about that just yet. It's first gonna give you 5X back on all flights booked directly with airlines or through American Express Travel, 5X on prepaid hotels booked through Amex's travel portal, and 1X on everything else. So obviously for the annual fee that comes on this card, that's pretty disappointing for the earning categories. And this card's gonna be the one that likely comes out of your wallet at the very least, even less than the Chase Sapphire Preferred. However, even if you barely put any purchases directly on this card, the perks and benefits that come with it are actually insane, and I talk about those more in depth in my Amex trifecta video. I'm not gonna cover all the different credits in this video, but like I said before, you can effectively get $1,500 plus worth of value from them. And while that all sounds great, I would be careful about that valuation because I wouldn't think that you get value from more than about half of the credits that come on this card. I can see a lot of people getting over $800 of value easy from this card, which is exactly what you want whenever the annual fee is $695. But please just make sure that's the case before you apply and go ahead and run some simulations based on the credits that this card offers. I should also mention here that there are multiple different versions of the Platinum card, the first of which being the Morgan Stanley version and the second of which being the Charles Schwab version. The one that I would probably get and use as a keeper card would be the Charles Schwab version because I do have a Charles Schwab brokerage account. And like I said, with a Charles Schwab brokerage account, I could then transfer all of my points from my Amex account into my Charles Schwab brokerage account at 1.1 cents per point, then cash out those points from my brokerage account to my bank account and effectively get 1.1 cents per point in value through cashback. But for the majority of people who are going to apply for the vanilla version of the Amex Platinum card, I would again effectively value your points at two cents per point. And then I would never redeem your Amex points for cashback unless you have the Charles Schwab version. And I'd let your Chase cards supplement any kind of cashback that you might want from this setup. The most important thing about the Amex Platinum card in this setup is that it's gonna drastically increase the amount of enjoyment you get from traveling in luxury. With this card alone, you're gonna be able to get to the airport, travel through security super fast because you either have TSA pre-check or global entry, plus clear if you even wanted it. Go sit in an Amex Centurion lounge since you already passed all the other peasants in line. Walk straight onto your flight into the first class cabin. Then once you land and make it to your Marriott hotel, you're gonna go ahead and get an upgraded room with your gold elite status that also comes on this credit card. And this is all gonna come to you for free just because you got this specific credit card. At this point, I know one of y'all is sitting out there commenting, no, this setup is trash. What about the gas category? So here's my honorable mention for y'all. If you do spend a ton at gas and don't live in the middle of a city where you might walk everywhere, the city custom cash is a card that's gonna give you 5X back on your highest eligible spend category every single month up to $500 worth of spend. So this card alone could cover all of your gas purchases every single month if you spend under that cap. But I would still argue that this five card setup without the city custom cash could still be really beneficial because you could bank on the OG Chase Freedom or the Chase Freedom Flex, whichever card you have, getting 5X back on gas for at least one quarter. And that would at least help supplement your spend for that quarter. But if you do spend more on gas, you might wanna add in another card or swap out one of these instead. Also, I mean, getting 1.5X back on all of your gas purchases still isn't bad, especially if you don't use gas very often. But as you can tell by now, all of these credit cards earn very well in tandem with each other.
each other, plus imagine the Amex Platinum in this setup. And if you break it down to the bare basics, this credit card setup is composed of the Chase Trifecta, including the OG Chase Freedom, after you product change from the Chase Freedom Student, the Chase Freedom Unlimited, and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. The combination of these cards is gonna allow you to take advantage of the 5% rotating quarterly categories on your Chase cards, have a catch-all card that gets you 1.5X on everything else, and a card that automatically at least doubles the value of your points whenever you transfer out to travel partners with it. Then you can use your Amex Duo as a food and travel related combo. And on top of that, these cards are gonna give you the most credits out of any credit cards out there really. So every single month and year, you're gonna be able to profit from these cards substantially if you do use those credits. Plus with your Amex Platinum card, you're gonna be able to travel in style and never look back on traveling in economy ever again. However, like I mentioned, these Amex cards do come at a high price and may not be worth it for everybody. There are many things to consider on top of what we talked about here today, whenever you go to apply for an Amex credit card. So before you do that, go ahead and watch this video first to see if Amex credit cards are actually not worth it for you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video once again, and me and Odin really do appreciate all of y'all's support. If you did enjoy this one, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, and we'll catch you guys next time.